Hi there, and welcome back to another PSDK and Pokemon Studio tutorial video. In this video, we are going to be going over how you can create merge requests, which are ways to help keep PSDK up to date with the new additions of other Pokemon games, and also how to make changes to existing things, whether you found a bug or you want to just add a new feature into the base kit of PSDK. It's a very straightforward and simple process, but to some people who have never done it before, as usual with Git, it is something that seems complicated. So to get started, you are going to have to make a GitLab account, not a GitHub account. There is a difference um, and they are not universal. So if you don't have a GitLab account already, just click on the sign in button up here and click on register now over here. I already have an account. I can't go through the registration process again, as it does require either a credit card or a phone number to verify the user. But I guess they don't want bots or duplicate accounts on their website. Once you've created your account, you're just going to need to log in. And once you're signed in, you're going to want to go to the PSDK project, which if you don't know the link, it's just gitlab.com slash Pokemon SDK slash Pokemon SDK, but it's also going to be linked down below. Now, the first thing you want to do here is you're going to want to create a fork. To create a fork, you literally just click on the button up here that says fork. If you don't see a button here, that means that you're not signed in yet and you're just looking at uh, the repository without being signed in. So there's no way for you to fork. But if you are signed in, there should be a button up here that says fork. When you click it, it shouldn't say go to your fork for you unless you've already previously created a fork like I have. For you, it should say create a fork. It should be a relatively simple and straightforward process. If it isn't, I'm sure there's videos online on how to create a fork. Now, once you've created your fork, it should look something like this. It should say gitlab.com in the top left corner with your username slash PSDK or sorry, slash Pokemon SDK. Also up here, it should say the same thing. That's how you're going to know that you're in your repository versus when you're in the Pokemon SDK slash Pokemon SDK repository, which presents itself like so. Now that we've created our own fork, we do need to clone this fork so that we can make changes to it and push these changes to our repository so that we can later make these merge requests to the base project. To clone this is just like when we cloned our regular repository, our regular project. So we need to go up here to code and we are going to clone with HTTPS. I'm going to copy this. And then if you haven't already, you should definitely create another separate project from your own project. Now I've done this already and I called it my PSDK dev build. Um, all I did was literally create a new project. I called it PSDK dev build and I, I just created it just like normal. Now, once you've created your development project, which is separate from your game project, you're going to want to go into that folder. So for example, the dev build, and just like how in our tutorial project, we had to create a clone of the base Pokemon SDK repository. We're going to do that, but with our fork. So I'm going into the dev build, which is the project that we just created. That's separate from our game project. And there shouldn't be a Pokemon SDK folder here for you. The reason why there is for me is because I've been working on this. So, um, for example, let's just say your project should look like this. When you go into GitHub and you want to clone a new repository, you're going to need to choose the local path of that new development build that we just made. And then we're going to have to get that repository that we had copied, which should say your username and Pokemon SDK .git. Once you click clone, and once you click clone, it should look something like this. It should have the name of your repository, and the branch that you're on, which should just be the development branch. So now you're almost ready to be in that environment where you can create changes that you can then push into a merge request. But you might be wondering, how do I find issues or how do I find something that I could work on? Fortunately for us, PSDK does have a ClickUp, which if you don't know what a ClickUp is, it's basically just a list of things. It is a list of things that need to be worked on. So over here, we have a Pokemon SDK um, engine folder, which is going to have the backlog folder. And in the backlog folder, you're going to see some to do's, some things that are, that are not currently working how they should be. For example, uh, you're going to see some in progresses, which are things that people are currently working on. You're going to see things that are in review, which means that they're already done, but just waiting to be reviewed and tested. And then you're going to see um, some delayed and some canceled, which you don't need to worry about those ones too much unless you just really want to work on those and like um, basically say, hey, someone else gave up on it. Let me do it. 
So once you're looking at this and you find something that you want, for example, let's say you wanted to add the Gen 3 Pokemon contest. Now, obviously this is gonna be a lot of work. Some of this is not for beginners. Uh, this is definitely for people who know what they're doing. So uh, they do also have some labels like a good first issue, good first issue, good first issue. So if you are brand new to this, maybe you should look more for the things that have that good first issue tag so that you uh, aren't going in too deep and you're not going ahead of yourself. Now, let's just say, for instance, I wanted to create this damp ability effect. What I would need to do in GitLab, or sorry, in GitHub Desktop first, is I would need to create a new branch, and this new branch should be a little explanatory of what it's going to be. So this one is going to be damp ability effect, and then I would create this branch. Now, all the changes that I'm making would be specific to this branch. Branches are basically another copy of your project. So let's say for instance, um, I'm making changes specifically on this branch. They wouldn't be seen on the development branch until you've uh, merged them. Now, you're not really gonna be merging things to your development branch. You're just gonna be making these changes and then you're gonna be publishing this branch to your project. And to make a change in the first place, we're gonna have to go into our Pokemon SDK folder, which you can just drag into Visual Studio. And then you could look for something that you want to do a change to. So let's just say that like I wanted to change the burn damage and this was something that officially happened in the games, right? And there was just a, a huge increase. They just changed how it works. And this is just something that's official, right? And usually any emerge request has to be something that's like official. There's a reason why you're adding it to the base kit. It can't be some like unique new feature. That's what a plugin is for. But let's just say that the damage is now a fourth of your max HP, right? And this is all I needed to do for my merge request. So now that I've made that change, um, I can now make this push to my branch, right? So let's just say uh, updated burn damage, right? And commit this to the, the branch, and then we're gonna publish the branch. So now that we publish the branch, if we go back to our GitLab, which is right here, and we're just gonna refresh it, you're gonna see that it says that you've pushed damp ability effect to invaders in Pokemon SDK. If you click on damp ability effect, it's going to take you to the branch, which I know it might be hard to see, but we were actually on development just a second ago, which you can see when you switch between the branches that they're actually different. Their change log is different. So changes that I make to the damp ability effect branch are not happening to my development branch until they actually get merged later down the line. But let's just say that I did everything I needed to do and that this merge request is now ready. What you would do next is you'd create a merge request. And what this is going to do is it's going to be making this merge request from your repository, as you can see here, invaders in slash Pokemon SDK, with the branch damp ability effect, and we're trying to push that into the Pokemon SDK development. Again, this is something that you're only supposed to do when you're ready. Do not do this beforehand. If your, if your merge request isn't completed, do not make a merge request. This is what you do at the very end once it's ready to be tested. You don't really do this as like a draft. You can do it as a draft, but it's really not advised unless, again, you really know what you're doing. The title should always be something that is uh, pretty explicit and explaining what exactly you're doing. So uh, for example, what we're supposed to do was a damp ability effect. So what this would say would be damp ability. Um, it could also be like add damp ability or something like that. And then your description should be descriptive of what you've done with this merge request. In our example would probably be something like added damp ability effect, preventing users from being exploded on or, or something, you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, before testing, this is things that the testers need to do before they can actually test. So if you had changes to like a CSV file, or if there was any other exterior changes that are not going to be pushed in with the changes that uh, come in with your branch, so exterior files or something, or something that someone needs to do as an extra step, you need to tell them here. The other thing to know is this is just kind of like a notes, like additional notes. This is kind of just like letting the users or the testers know of things. This is not something that you have to have, just like before testing is not something that is required. But if there are things that are needed to be noted or things that users have to do before they test, then you definitely should tell them. Now the tests to realize this is a pretty important thing. This is uh, pretty much, you need to list everything that um, your changes are gonna affect. Uh, anything that you think is gonna help 
prove that your merge request is in the playable state and in a state that should be pushed into the development build, you need to list all the little tests here. And if you used, if you have a video or an image that showcases the content that you've made, then what you should do is first off, delete this because this is just a comment. And then if you have a video, then you can uh, delete this. And then of course you need to delete this part. And then you would need to update this video URL and then it would work as a hyperlink because when you go to preview, as you can see here, you can click on it and it should, it should take you to the video showing what your merge request is doing. Now, this is also not required, but if you're doing things like you're adding in a new move effect or in this case, an ability effect, then you should at the very least link the Bulbapedia link to the ability. Now, once all of that has been done, you can then do assignee usually is the user who created this merge request. So you should just click assign to me. And then if your uh, merge request is now in the situation where it's ready to be tested, you'd click on labels and then you'd click on needs to be tested. Now these other labels are going to be things that some people can do, um, like needs to be fixed or something. Uh, if your MR is broken. Now, once you've set up this merge request, you're going to click on create merge request. Now I'm obviously not going to click it because this is not a legitimate merge request. I'm not pushing this, <laughs> but if yours was, then you'd click create merge request. And what that's going to do is it's going to take you to a page that looks something like this. And this is my most recent merge request. So it should take you to something uh, similar to this, but with your merge request title, your description and everything that you wrote here. And if you ever wanted to see other merge requests in case you wanted to test some things, you could actually click on the merge request list over here and you're going to see all of the uh, currently active and open merge request. I know this video was a little bit shorter than my usual ones. And I know um, some people aren't familiar or comfortable with uh, GitLab or GitHub. I really do think that um, GitHub desktop makes things so much easier. And another thing that's really important to note is whenever you're done with your branch, you should always go back to development create a new branch whenever you're going to make a new merge request and then um, work on it from there. So uh, just make sure you're always going back to development when you're done with your branch and then creating a new branch because you can accidentally create new branches from a branch and that's just going to be a huge problem. Hopefully I made this uh, slightly easier for people to understand. And again, I cannot wait to see what people start contributing. As usual, big shout out to my supporters over on Patreon and specifically in the nerd you know. Thank you so much for supporting me. I hope to see you guys soon and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.